Hi everybody, I hope you're all well and today I'm going to take a step back a little and try to stick more to what we can see or what we have seen and what we heard out of Meghan and Harry's own mouths and actions and what we can deduce or learn from it and how it influences what the future will look like. So in other words, I'm going to pack away the tarot cards, <laughs> although I have been tempted a few times to try that, but not today. Today I want to err on the side of logic, if at all. It does not matter what lies or fibs Megan tell, whether to herself or others, it is clear that she had a Diana obsession. And this is proven through numerous accounts from friends and family. Now, I remember Charles and Diana's wedding day. I was in the middle of our matric year and our English teacher had brought a television set to her classroom. So the matrics or the final year girls who were interested were allowed to take off from other lessons and go watch it all in her classroom. I had just turned 18 a few days prior and was on the cusp of adulthood. Meghan Markle, however, was only to be born a few days later, allegedly. In a way, it is thus a little strange that Meghan developed a Diana obsession. And yes, as I proceed, I'm going to prove to you that it is indeed true. You see, when talking about myself, for instance, I can't in all honesty say that I had a real true Diana obsession. But I very definitely identified with her and basically followed everything written and published about her. And it is understandable. We were more or less the same age and when she married her prince, I was about to set out to find mine sort of thing. There were parallels because we were of the same age and generation. But when it comes to the little multiracial American girl Meghan Markle, it is a little harder to explain, isn't it? Yes. The world knew who Diana was, and indeed, the shy blonde caught the attention of young and old the world over. So, it would not be out of the ordinary either for Meghan Markle to, at some point, out of curiosity or interest, have watched the Charles and Diana wedding. But a mother of a friend of Meghan's told how obsessed Megan was with watching the video reruns of Diana's wedding as a child. But these stories of Megan's obsession with the British royal family, and in particular with Diana, does not end with this recall by Sonia Ardakani, the mother of one of Megan's little friends. We also know that she was gifted the book, Diana in her own words, by Andrew Morton, and in a short video clip of her as a student, the book can be seen on a shelf in her room. In Andrew Morton's book, he tells how Megan sobbed and how tears streamed down her face as she and her friends watched Diana's funeral. Andrew Morton highlights how Megan was particularly moved by the young 12, nearly 13-year-old Harry. Now, I would go, yeah, right. At 16 year old, I think Megan's attention would have been more focused on William. But let's leave that there and move on. I believe that it is true that Megan's obsession with the royal family increased after Diana's death. Even before she is officially linked to Harry, we see some oddities. There are times when her clothing and poses at certain events could be seen as her copying Diana, particularly as from 2015 onwards. And I have more than enough evidence, I think, to prove that her pursuit of Harry did indeed begin in 
earnest in 2015 and that the 2016 meeting was just a culmination of a previous and ongoing concerted effort. Have a look at this photo shoot, for instance. Although it could be chalked down to a coincidence, when seen in light of all the other actions and stunts, it is indeed doubtful that it was a coincidence and more likely the start and part of Megan worming herself into the lifestyle and orbit of the elite and the royals. Yes, I feel that although Megan harbored an obsession since her early childhood, one of princes and princesses, carriages and crowns, <laughs> I also feel that her obsession escalated and transferred to action in 2015. In 2015, when it became known that Suits was to be renewed into a season three, Megan bought herself a Cartier tank watch, just like Diana's, and had it inscribed from M to M. Yes, again, I mean, why the Cartier tank and not a new vehicle, a piece of art or a trip to an exotic destination? No, a tank watch just like Diana's. Anyway, there are a number of instances and a number of stories from a variety of people about Meghan's trajectory towards the people Harry and the royals mingled with. There are those like Misha Nunu, Violet von Westenholz, and even Princess Eugenie, with whom she all met and mingled prior to meeting Harry. But then we should also not ever forget about Marcus Anderson and his links and connections. Remember, he was so friendly or is so friendly with Eugenie and Jack that he was even invited to their wedding. Never ever forget that. But now we need to use this knowledge and look forward towards, well, for now the present and then the future. After Megan snagged Harry, we certainly saw an escalation in her Diana fabrication. As a matter of fact, and by their own admissions, Megan used some of Diana's characteristics and habits to snare Harry, like using Diana's favorite perfume, etc. We saw Megan wearing Diana's jewelry, we saw her wearing clothing so similar to Diana's that it could very well have been taken or refashioned from Diana's own clothing. Yes, some of it could indeed have been coincidental, but some definitely not like. For instance, the top she wore to the last Invictus closing ceremony. Far more disturbing, however, than clothing and jewellery are Megan's behaviours in which she tries to emulate Diana. It is thought, and I'm inclined to agree, that the Oprah interview was indeed Megan's Martin Bashir moment, at least in her own mind. It was her opportunity, just like Diana's, to present herself as the victim of an insensitive and dysfunctional family. But it is also when we learn from Megan herself about her suicidal thoughts during pregnancy, just like that of her mother-in-law Diana during her pregnancy with William in 1982. Now to do a full and comprehensive analysis of Megan's delusional attachment will indeed take days and it will need explanations of words and terms like echopraxia, echokinesis, echomotism, schizophrenia, Tourette's, autism spectrum, mirroring, but ultimately it all comes down to one thing, lacking 
a sense of self. Lacking a sense of self is not a fleeting situation. It is what it is, and it is a long-term, if not lifelong, issue. So now, let's step into the present and aim for the future. Harry and Meghan have now moved from England, moved out of the royal fold, and one would think that particularly Meghan would turn her back on anything royal. But no, that is not the case. She is clinging to her British titles, her security, her luxuries, her mansion, her private jet flights, even handles her visits and events like that of any other royal event. Like Diana assisting Andrew Morton with his book, Megan did the same with Scobie and Durant. Yes, it is clear when deep diving and analysing that Megan is ticking off the boxes of Diana's life. It is almost undeniable. So what we are seeing from Megan now is, in my opinion, Megan heading into her final Diana phase. Megan losing a lot of weight very quickly. Yes, we shall likely soon read about Megan's battle with bulimia or stress-related illness causing her to lose weight. We are also seeing the sad phase. Remember Diana tearing up during events shortly before and after the divorce? Um, her sitting at events blankly staring, all too tragic. We are also seeing the scared phase. Remember when Diana became paranoid, believing everyone was out to get her and believing that she was going to be killed? We see the same sort of skittish, fearful behavior in Megan now. So, what next? The affair with the bodyguard? Or has that happened already? And then what? A divorce followed by a car crash, even if staged and non-fatal? I have said this before. I'm certainly no fortune teller, but something is brewing. I think that September to December is certainly going to be an interesting one. Okay, guys, so that is it from me for now. <laughs> I have loads of things on my list for today. So I'm going to love and leave you. Please take good care of yourselves until we meet again on the next one. Bye.